Hello, hi, and welcome. You are listening to Gully Cricket to Bounce Wicket podcast. I am your host Srinivas. Hi, everybody. This is Raja. Uh, hi, this is Manoj. And today we are going to be joined by Jack from the Cricket Podcast. But thanks for your time. Hi, everyone. Thanks. It's a it's a pleasure to be here. Looking forward to talking about this series. Yeah, uh, it's been really busy week for cricket fans, I should say, with hundreds starting and few of the Indian players also playing in hundreds, especially women. Yeah, cricket team in colours. <laughs> playing in sri lanka and winning the series it's been busy week so jack have you been following hundreds how, how was it at all yeah actually i went to the first game um at the oval so for the women's the women's match that is um, i took my girlfriend along <clears throat> who's not a big cricket fan she really enjoyed it um i think in this country people were a bit nervous about the new competition people thought that it might marginalize the county game um, squeeze out the traditional supporter but but actually after sort of the first few days there've been some really really good matches uh, a few of the stars have have turned up and and played great innings or or taken wickets uh, and I think there's quite a positive vibe around the tournament now. Um, I, 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 and I think it sort of shows once again that cricket's a great sport. And if you get it in front of people, um, it's it, people people will enjoy it. And people are upset with the graphics. I don't. I don't mind the graphics actually. So for some people are, but I think that's that's. So the. the, the you know they've they've sort of changed the way the game is scored and presented on TV because it's done by balls and not by overs. And I think there are, there's a group of people who still do want the hundred to fail, and they'll they'll hate it for whatever reason they can find. And the cricket's been so good so far that they can't say anything bad about the cricket, so they're complaining that you know the graphics are too pink or whatever. Um, but I don't mind it. I think I, 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 again um, using my girlfriend as the barometer of of, of past, partially what this tournament's for, which is to attract a new audience. She thinks. It's, the graphics were cool. Um, I think in, in many ways, she's more interested in the graphics than the cricket. So um, uh, I, I don't have a problem with them. Yeah, uh, frankly, I've seen few matches and I felt it's easy to follow the match actually because it's quite simple, right? Number of balls remaining and number of runs we have to score or how many you are going to score in the balls that are left, 5, 10, 15, 20. Like there is no, I mean, current run rate conversion and required run rate conversion. It's quite simple. So I think the game is here to stay for a few, few years at yeah. least. I mean, actually, I have to say, being at the stadium, that was it was noticeably easier to follow what was going on. Yeah. So, Raja, you you are quite interested in Olympics, and how has your week been? Our last couple of days been? Yeah. Uh, so, I've been pretty uh, interested, and I've been watching a lot of the Olympics, uh, especially the Indian Games. And uh, a good thing that has come out is uh, we've been able to get a medal in the first day itself. And uh, uh, coming from a country like which is uh, short on uh, <laughs> uh, any other sports uh, uh, in, with regards to cricket. It's a huge achievement and uh, Mirabai Chanu is being celebrated as she is uh, and she should be. So it's been a pretty interesting uh, kind of an exposure at least in terms of the Olympics with different sports and different uh, events and uh, getting to know different technicalities and uh, you know uh, Get the, and, and most importantly, waking up in the morning during the weekends, which is again a uh, pretty rarity for it's, it's quite a rarity for me. So waking up at around four five in the morning just to catch a tennis game or a archery shootout or something like that. It's been pretty, pretty interesting. Couple of Manoj, you you look so relaxed. Is it because of your smartphone not being there with you for the past one week? Yeah, partly yes. <laughs> My my phone uh, yeah abruptly stopped working and I'm uh, actually enjoying the uh, <laughs> free time that I'm uh, at the moment having spending a lot of time with my family and in fact everybody should, should try it put put your you know spend spend time doing little things which give you so yeah yeah so good so, it's good yeah yeah and uh, so I think everyone is in good mood today so let's get into the show first. Uh, so while one, like I mentioned, one team of India in colours is beating Sri Lanka at one and other team has an uphill task in England. And uh, it's not, you know, England tour is not been an easy thing for India, especially even if you see for the past 80 years from the time when cricket has started, right? Uh, because if I look at stats before, like what happened, uh, what happened before when India toured England, so far they have toured 18 times and they won three series out of 18 times and one time they could, you know, draw the series. And last time India won was in 2007. So I, I'm just bringing these numbers to not 
say that india cannot beat england in england i'm just trying to show how important or how difficult it is for india to go and beat england in england while yeah we know this team what they have done in the past maybe 6 9 months beating australia in australia or dominating england in india but going to england and playing in england is altogether a different ball game of course they play with a different ball as well so yeah if i look at uh, a little deeper into what india has done uh, in the previous tours so just to bring out some stats only like i mentioned only one time india had uh, test test series draw and three times they won right from 1932 to 2018 so out of the three series that india won uh so after losing the first test match they never won the series whereas the current team we know they have they have the habit of losing the first test match and coming back but i don't think it's possible or easy for them to do it in england now and uh, they hardly like i should say all the three series even that india won before are only three test match series they have i can say four or five test match series india never won in england so considering what is at stake uh, we have world test championship world test championship cycle starting with this series so a lot a lot is at stake for both the teams england they have ashes ahead so this is obviously going to be important playing at home and uh, for india this is going to be a biggest overseas tour in the next championship cycle and for them the stakes are high and they 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 definitely wanted to start on a high note so one thing that i should say in common for both the teams is getting beaten with by new zealand recently that is one thing i should say common that these two teams has so just before going into this series i just wanted to give a small review about last tour of india to england so if we see in 2018 india played five test match series and uh, india again started the series by losing the test match and uh, they won the third test match at trent bridge uh, with the you can say uh, credit to hardik pandya for taking five wickets and a good second inning score and then again they lost the balance two test matches it's it's not, like i said it's never been easy to you know tour uh, england and uh, last test match also showed the same even though virat kohli came back strongly after the 2014 uh disastrous batting uh he came pretty strongly and uh, last series india lost 4-1 i think so yeah i think india lost the last series by 4-1 but uh, raja my first question to you uh it, it, that series was not as bad as it sounds actually india lost two test matches out of the four test matches with 30 runs and 60 runs so right. it was not actually that bad at the same time england were better team on that tour so your thoughts on last tour so most definitely uh, i agree with whatever you just uh, said uh, england you know we may not uh, we uh, it has been uh, marketed in the last 3 4 years as how australia was the place to beat and all that but england uh, historically has been the most difficult place for india to tour and uh, travel and even uh, put up decent performances uh surely uh, the score line will uh, say in the, about the last tour that we lost 4-1 but uh, there were pretty close uh, games and uh, uh the kind of competitiveness uh, that india put up was much higher than the previous tour uh, back in uh, i think uh, 2014 yeah uh, so surely it was a good, i think it's a point of like uh, learning that has uh, happened and a lot of those players are coming back again and Uh, with the uh, additional uh, uh, input of uh, having uh, been in england for the last uh, two months or so and uh, been there and being conditioned and they played uh, in along with the wtc finals uh, they've also played a couple of a cup, played a county game and a couple of uh, players have been uh, playing uh, county cricket as well so i think in terms of preparation this series looks uh, much better uh, yeah i am i'm hopeful that uh, india will put up a better show this time around and and manoj uh, 2014 was a disastrous tour for virat and then he came back really strongly of course uh, he, he he haven't got uh, similar support from team members last time otherwise india would have won the series what are your thoughts on virat kohli considering he was not in great touch in the england series with india in india 
Yeah, I think uh, 2014, um, they were, uh, I mean, he didn't play well, of course. Uh, a lot of uh, experts and former players were saying his technique was not good enough, uh, not good enough, good enough, and so on. But he came back strong in 2018. So I'm hopeful that he brings his A game also in this tour uh, because uh, we've seen the glimpses of his greatness in the WTC final. Um, uh, both uh, both innings he played well but out, got out uh, so I'm hopeful that uh, this series he plays he brings his A game and also inspires the other batsmen also to do well and, and win the series So Jack if we see in the last tour India lost toss on all the five matches so which is like uh, difficult for any visiting team to you know really come uh, strong so how important it is for the visiting teams to win tosses in England especially uh, that's interesting. I mean, that, that, uh, you know, with Virat Kohli tossing the coin, I don't think you've got much chance um, that there, fellas. But um, I don't. I, I think it can make a huge difference. Like there are days in England where you, you wake up and you just don't want to bat. Like batting will, would be the worst possible thing that you could do on on those days. But they're not as common as people think. Um, I I think over. All English pitches tend to be quite balanced. The the the, the 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 only time I think you know a toss really matters is when you do get one of those you know very overcast days where it's a bit cold. The light isn't very good. Um, often on uh, English pitches now because it rains a lot here, they've got very good drainage. So so what they do, and, and you'll see this definitely at Lords, they leave a little bit more grass on the pitch than they normally would. So it's almost like a day minus one pitch for day one. Um, so, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think this is a roundabout way, way of saying it doesn't matter as much as, as people think in, in England. Um, there's actually, I don't, I don't know if you've read it. Um, the, the two guys who, um, or two of the guys who work for CrickFizz wrote a book about cricket and they, there's a chapter on that dedicated to, to how important the toss is in cricket. And actually, um, it's not as important as we think as fans, um, and batting second, generally speaking, is or, or generally speaking i think over the last 20 years has been a bit of an advantage because you get to you know you get to bat last you get to know whether you need to go for a draw you get to know whether you can chase the runs you have a lot more control over the pace of the game um but yeah i, I so I, I don't think it'll matter that much the, to the two places that you do i think want to win the toss are, are lords if if the weather's bad um, and Old Trafford, there is, there is, there's a, there's a historical advantage to batting first at Old Trafford. Other than that, I don't think you need to worry, worry too much. I, I think with Kohli's luck at us, I think Indian fans will be happy listening to you because, <laughs> 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 because it's, uh, it's whenever we really pray that Virat should win the toss today, he, he's, he was going to lose the toss that day. So. I think uh, I don't think it's worth spending more time there. We should start considering India is going to lose toss again and all the five matches. So uh, I think Raja, I think you touched upon it that uh, for a lot of players, this is not going to be the first tour. In fact, uh, Vihari and Rishabh Pant made their debut in the last tour to England, and we have players like Ishan, Shami, Virat Kohli, Rahane, Pujara. Most of them are touring third time probably, and few of them are touring for second time. Hardly, I think Mayank is the only one touring. Uh, first time probably in the playing 11, KL Rahul was opener for the last tour. So, and uh, they have got good time. I think they got a three days practice matches and uh, they have, I think, one or two intra-squad matches as well. So, how prepared they are, do you think, to start the series? No. Very, very prepared. I think uh, I cannot, um, I, I don't think it can come to a point of lack of preparation anymore. Uh, this has, you know, even if you look at uh, this as an extended tour of England, uh, I think even the WTC final should count uh, because uh, uh, people have uh, played there and it's, it's just about getting into the mindset of, uh, you know, playing the Duke's ball and uh, negotiating uh, movement of the pitch and in the air and that those kind of things. I think if you're also getting into that mindset and the more uh, game time you have, uh, that makes it a lot more easier, I feel. Uh, considering that, that's it. I do feel that uh, India is in a much more uh, better place. But I, uh, the, at the same time, uh, the same issues that have uh, occurred uh, uh, in terms of addressing movement and how are they uh, batting genuine pace and uh, swing, that, that will determine how uh, India will end up doing in this particular series. Yeah, 
frankly i don't remember at least in our lifetime when india toured one month before the tour starts yeah. to a foreign country right hardly they always tour maybe one week ahead they'll they'll land there or probably maximum 10 days ahead so right. landing one month before and starting the preparation is like good sign for again like you mentioned it depends a lot on technique then you know adjusting the conditions is one thing but it depends on how well they are able to adjust to the conditions there so jack you follow uh, indian cricket as much as we do so i just want to ask you this question like uh, with the squad that india has do you really think they need backup players from sri lanka tour what are your thoughts on that um, i think the only player that, that they could in theory miss is hardik pandya um, but that would be contingent on him being able to bowl a, a, a seam bowling all rounder in england is more useful than a, a spin bowling all rounder um so maybe a switch between him and jadeja or even him and ashwin um i i think could have been useful um but my understanding and correct me if i'm wrong is that they the 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 btci or, or the the indian coaching staff don't think the hardik pandya can bowl 15 overs in a day um which which you sort of need to do um if you're going to come as a as a as a, a seam bowling all rounder um possibly as well I, i and i don't know maybe maybe you'd agree with this maybe you wouldn't now that shubman gill is ruled out of the series i think with an, with an injury maybe they'd want another opener shikhar dhawan just to be around because as you've been saying and the conditions in england can be bad and and and, and you know james anderson with the new ball when he feels like he's going to get someone out they're in trouble um, yeah. and and it's and you, and you see this over and over again he'll have a bunny for a series and he'll just get them out over and over and over again and the same with broad actually i mean look at look at broad v warner in the in the last ashes series it was it was he might as well have not gone out to bat he should have just started one down um and so maybe you do want the option to rotate around your openers if one of them is just not playing the swing ball very well um but i you know i looking at that india squad as you said they've all they've all toured before um i think they'll know what's coming they've had a reasonably extended preparation because of covid because of the world test championship they they might not have played loads of counties or whatever but they'll have had some inter squad games they'll have had a lot of time to practice in the in 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 England with the dukes ball um obviously playing new zealand the 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 current world test champions will would have been a a good warm up match uh, and they played like that combined counties team over three days recently as well so i think i think you know in, in modern terms they've had quite a lot of preparation for this tour i i i think that they'll be quite confident um that the 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 players that they've got um we'll we'll be able to win this series yeah uh, and just to update you uh, if you are ever washington sundar got injured and avesh khan got injured and they are leaving england so basically the news here which is not confirmed is that indian team is going to send prithvi shah and uh, sky to england with uh, again rahane which is i mean rahane seems to be picked up hum- some hamstring injury and not sure about the first test match so uh, the talk is that sky is going to land up in england so it will be interesting to see if he lands up and then if at all he plays and what position he plays yeah i'd have thought they they'll go with fahari first though won't they for 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 at least yeah. the first test um i think it'd be interesting i think uh, yeah yeah no i i i mean i i think i i think probably the the the, the big unknown is how well the indian top 3 will be able to handle this exactly. ball um yeah. you know pujara's got an okay record average is about 30 it takes him a long time to get there which can be quite useful in england taking the shine off the ball um I'd, rohit sharma i don't think he's played in england in red ball cricket um maybe he played he played in 2014 but not as an opening batsman okay um i i think that's quite a different job to to batting in australia or or batting in india so i mean as great as he was against england recently i'm sure he'll be i'm sure he'll be looking forward to playing in england but that's a that's a hard thing to do and then i i mean i don't know i'm just looking through the team myan kagawal i guess will be the will be the 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 other opener um for the first test uh and and he he will be quite fresh unless i remember maybe they'll go kl rahul pull a pull a you know surprise us all but i would have thought that agawal um and if yeah i mean i i guess 
if, if they can't do it, then maybe they'll want Shaw to come in and and shore things up, I suppose. Um, but it, I, I, I mean, I, th- that's where I think the, the the first big battle of the series will be is is when is Virat Kohli coming to the crease? Because if he's coming to the crease after twenty five overs, or you know over his ten innings, if he, if that happens seven out of ten times. I think he'll have a good series, and I think the rest of the Indian batting lineup will flow from there. You know, Rishabh Pant will be coming in later in innings, and w- when the bowlers are tired, when the ball's a little bit, you know, less lively, um, it allows you know Ashwin and and Jadeja just a little bit more more time, and and again they 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 get to bat against a, a tired bowling attack. So I think it all all of that in English cricket flows from what the top three do and how long they last. So uh, I, I think. I think that's the battle, and, and maybe Pritvi Shaw will, will 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 play a role in that. I'm not sure Sky is. I mean, I'd, be, I'd like to see him play, um, but I'm not sure he'll. I'm not sure he'll feature even if he does come over. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think uh, KL Rahul seems to be in good touch, and in fact, like I mentioned, he is opener for India in all the five Test matches and last series, and he's second top scorer after Virat Kohli in that series for India. So. I think in all likelihood they'll try to fit in uh, KL Rahul somewhere in the playing eleven, probably in the middle order if not as uh, opening batsman. So uh, Raja Rishabh Pant uh, has recovered from COVID and he has joined the team. So do you think he'll be fit for the first Test match or do you think it's a long tour and they should rest him for the first Test match and play KL Rahul as a keeper batsman? Uh, I think so. I think maybe uh, if you ask me, maybe uh, at least give him. Uh, more rest so that I think he can come back stronger for the race. It's going to be a long tour, as you said. Uh, and uh, uh, India have uh, tested out uh, KL Rahul uh, as a keeper as well. Uh, but uh, then again, uh, I'm not very sure uh, how they might think because uh, uh, how Rishabh Pant has performed over the last year, he's been uh, a phenomenon and uh, he's been completely indispensable uh, to the team and his single-handedly brought uh, results. So if even if there is even even if it's at eighty percent or seventy percent fitness, I think they will try to like ma- manage uh, his uh, uh, presence or making make him a part of the playing eleven. Uh, it could be a difficult call, I, but luckily we still have around eight to nine more days. I think by then he should because he's just joined the team a couple of days earlier. Uh, maybe uh, by the time the uh, the squad is announced for the play, the playing eleven is announced. Uh, we'll get to know he'll be in a much more uh, better physical shape and uh, probably that will also brighten his chances of getting into the eleven. So Manoj, like Jack mentioned, uh, Hardik Pandya has been a very important pillar in the test batting overseas, in fact, as an all-rounder and India is missing him in this tour. And uh, I think only one person who can replace him, if at all, with his best performance is Shardul Thakur, if he ups his batting and bowling. So do you think uh, he will get a chance in more games this is i mean this series because of his all round ability what do you think i think it depends on what combination is india is, india is going for i mean if we've looked at wtc final they've said two spinners and three fast bowlers is our best combination that we have if if they go according to that obviously shardul thakur will not get a chance but if they want to try out um, leave one spinner out and bring in a let's say a bowling all under Shardul Thakur is the best fit, and he can also bat. Not as good as Hardik, but he can he can score uh, 30, 40 uh, runs, and then uh, you know give you that chance in England. So uh, it all depends on the combination. So Shardul has definitely a chance because he's a good all uh, bowling all rounder. He can swing the ball. So I think uh, if they go with that uh, three fast bowler, one bowling all rounder combination, definitely Shardul will get a chance in the series. Yeah, I think, in fact, even if I see in 2018 tour, India played uh, for most of the series, three fast bowlers, one spinner and Hardik. That's how the whole series has Mm. been played, except for the last match where Vihari has come in place of Hardik and he made his debut. So I think he should get whenever India wanted to go with four fast bowlers, means three main fast bowlers. And if they are going with one spinner, I think in all probability, he, he should get and India should at least, you know, give him chance to prove that he is worth giving a try. So... Let's get into the playing eleven and uh, Manoj. Uh, who do you think will open at least for the first test match for India? 
I think looking at the uh, the count uh, the match against the county uh, selected eleven, I think they've opened with uh, Mayank and Rohit. So I think they will go with that combination. Uh, try try the first test with this combination and and try if if uh, see if it is working out. If not, I think uh, maybe they will maybe look at bringing Kale Rahul uh, in that opening opening slot. So on uh, Raja, I don't think there is any any surprise in the. Two, three, four position. I mean, three, four, five positions, right? No, no, not at all. Uh, I think they uh, they had a bad game surely uh, in the WTC finals, and uh, uh, they will want to prove uh, their uh, muscle again. So the uh, the coming into the series, as I said, uh, with some expectations and uh, uh, how even Jack was mentioning it, how uh, number three and four, five they uh, perform that will determine how far India will go. So uh, they have a huge uh, crucial role of uh, all this thing, but uh, I, I'm not sure is uh, Rahani fit. Uh, I think there are concerns about his hamstring. Yeah, I think uh, it is not clear yet actually whether he is fit for the first test match or not because it, I mean there is still some time. Um, probably close to ten days we have, so right. not sure. And uh, like I mentioned, Sky is also traveling to cover up the yeah, middle but, order. Uh, but I think in all yeah, probability, if, Vihari should get. Yeah, Vihari the, will be a straight swap for uh, Rahani in case he's not uh, fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even then, uh, considering uh, even he's played a lot of uh, cricket in England by now, I think uh, he'll also be pushing his uh, uh, pushing himself to do well or backing himself to do well. So yeah, I think they're pretty solid. Uh, three, four, five, and uh, Kohli, Pujara, and uh, Rahane or Rahane or Vihari. And we have six definitely as Rishabh Pant. And if Rishabh Pant is not fit, we we'll have K L Rahul as right replacement. Now okay. my question is, if uh, let us say only Vihari and K L Rahul, one of them have the chance to play, so who will India go with? Uh, I think based on the recent form, uh, Rahul has struck a century. I think it will be difficult to uh, leave him out of the considerations if there is a, uh, if there is an opportunity for somebody to fit in. Uh, yeah, I think uh, at least initial level, uh, I would back uh, KL Rahul over Bihar. Yeah. So Jack, uh, I think if in if India want to go with one spinner, who should you prefer? Whom should they prefer? Um, I would. I mean, that's a really tricky one. I, I think I would do this based on matchups, and I would go uh, with Jadeja because I think he'll trouble Crawley. I think he'll trouble Dom Sibley. I think he's got a better chance of getting Joe Root out as good a player against spin as Joe Root is, but he spins the ball away from Joe Root. Um, so I and, and I think his upside with the bat um, at number seven or number eight or wherever you want to bat him. Uh, is probably a little higher. If I were India, though, I'd probably play both. Um, so I think there's a question, isn't there, in, in terms of that, the construction of the 11. It's basically, do you play the conditions and go with four seamers, or do you play the matchups? And I, I think the matchups tell you quite strongly that England cannot play spin. Um, and I would bowl, well, I mean, with the exception of probably Root and Butler, who, who definitely can play spin. Um, I, I, I would, I would favour that. Um, I, I think Dom Sibley... You know, Rory Burns, uh, Zach Crawley, they'd love to see an India side that's, that's stocked full of paces because that's how they've made it into the England team. They've, they've, they're good against pace. That's, that's, that's what they do. Um, I, I, as soon as you take the pace off the ball, I mean, Dom simply doesn't, literally does not know how to score runs against, against spin. Um, yeah. Rory Burns, it's a matter of time before he plays a reverse sweep for no reason. Like, um, they, they're all quite flawed. Uh, in terms of their approach against spin, in, in 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 the way that they just aren't against pace bowling, um, and even against New Zealand, I, I know that they lost the series, and, and here in England, people were like, "Oh, how have we lost New Zealand?" You lost New Zealand because New Zealand are the the best pace bowling attack in the world. But England actually did score runs; they weren't completely blown away. It was it was, you know, if anything, it was actually New Zealand's batting that that, that won that that series for 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 the cool. Kiwis. Yeah. Um, so uh, I. I I would favour the matchup, so I'd play both spinners um, at least for the first couple of tests. Uh, Definitely, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I I think India should try that at least because they went in with both of them saying that we play to our strengths, right? I think it's time that they give at least first two test matches the chance for both of them, especially considering both can bat and Jadeja is in good touch and. Even in the three-day game, he played really well. That, that's what makes really tough for management many times between Jadeja and uh, Ashwin, whom to take. Because both of them can bat a bit. Jadeja sometimes really bats very well. And then 
Ashwin, I mean, he played one county match and he showed, you know, how talented he is in that one single county match. So, uh, Manoj, do you think India will play both the spinners? Well, um, I think they will go with one spinner, maybe Ashwin, because uh, let's be honest, he's the better spinner of the two. And then uh, we've looked at the WDC final as well. Uh, we we all thought in, in hindsight that one more uh, fast bowler would have been would have been better on that day. So I think they'll go with Ravi Ashwin and then bring in maybe Shadul Thakur for this match, or or maybe bring in uh, Mohammad Siraj uh, in place of Jadeja. Even that could happen. So don't you think yeah. if they bring in, uh, you know, uh, Siraj in place of Jadeja, it will weaken the India's batting? Because, uh, I mean, anything can happen in England. Yeah, true. But uh, it's, it's a trade-off. So uh, basically, if, if, if you're bringing in Kale Rahul, if, if Rishan is, uh, is not fit, then we have enough batsmen, I feel, because uh, Kale Rahul is in good form. And then you have the top five who can, who can perform. So... It, it depends on what the, what the team needs. They need an extra bowler or, or an extra batsman, or all-rounder, if I mean. So, Raja, your thoughts? Yeah, uh, I think maybe I, I agree with uh, Jack to an extent. I think uh, both spinners could be an option. But historically, I have another uh, counterpoint here is that uh, India have not used uh, the fourth seamer well uh, in the last uh, few years. Uh, they've been severely underballed. Uh, even uh, the last instance that uh, India used four seamers, I think, was in Australia recently, where uh, Navdeep Saini barely bowled. He was, uh, I think, he barely got through around 15, 20 overs throughout the game. So even if you're using uh, uh, the fourth, fourth fast bowler as a bowling option and not just as someone, a batsman who can bowl or uh, just as a uh, just to make sure that uh, to contain or something, or you should, I think Kohli would be uh, Kohli should try to use him better. I think that coming from point because other than that, I think uh, uh, having some spinners is a is playing to the strengths. But uh, if conditions are suitable, you can add a uh, fourth seamer, but play the seamer uh, to as a proper bowling option and not just as someone who's just like there to as a fail safe for somebody who's going to be there in case something goes wrong. So Manoj, uh, who do you think India will play as fast bowling battery? I think last time most of the games were played by Ishan, uh, Bumra and Shami. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, obviously Shami and I think Ishan going by his performance in the past, Ishan will definitely be there and Mohamed Shami considering his form uh, in that WCTC final. I'm not really sure about Mumra uh, because uh, he didn't really bowl, uh, but we all know he's a great bowler, but he did not bowl well in the WDC final and also in the uh, match against the county 11 he picked only one wicket so i'm not really sure uh, maybe uh, kohli might have a uh, might have a different idea maybe bring in siraj in place of bumrah that we have to wait and wait and watch so i would say uh, two fast bowlers for sure shami and ishant but the third one i'm really uncertain at this point jack your thoughts <sighs> i'd play bumrah i i i think I, I just think his body of work, as it were, over the last five years is so much better than everyone in the world that isn't called Pat Cummins, that you have to think that he'll return to that level sooner or later. I, 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 I do agree, though, with the point about the World Test Championship final. His bowling in that was a little bit weird. And I wonder, I don't know, you know, we, in England, we don't get a huge amount of exposure to um india team news because of, there's a language barrier basically um i don't know is is there like a lasting effect from his, his back injury that means he's a little bit slower now um because it felt like at times in the world Test championship final at least he was sort of bowling 88 miles an hour when i seem to remember him bowling sort of 93 miles an hour um I, I, maybe that's you know because i've watched highlights of Bumrah and whenever we, you know he bowls someone it's 93 miles an hour and, I, and I've not watched spells, but is I, do you think his pace is down or is, is, is something going on there? Uh, I don't think uh, his pace is down. I, I really don't know the numbers, but uh, I, I haven't read anything about it uh, because uh, it, like, like in India, it will be instantly comes out if there is something wrong with some player. So I don't think uh, his bowling is really down because of that. But again, like you said, Bumrah is someone who, who is hard to ignore. Right, he's one such talent. So 
let's see i think there is good reserves for good reserve for india i think they can bring in umesh for one match because it's a long tour like lot of players can, will get chances and siraj also going ahead definitely he is going to be in that combination somewhere but i think uh, if if fit i think they will go with uh, the more or less the same team as they played wtc finals let's hope they'll come up with a good uh, good playing 11 for the first test match so jack coming and, uh, to uh, sorry to yeah, right. and just to uh, underscore what uh, jack and you said also i think this is one of the issues that australia they had uh, with uh, bowling the same four bowlers throughout the four match uh, series against india and by the time that gone to come back come down to Gab- the gaba test uh, they were not as penetrative and uh, that also affected uh, the result eventually yeah definitely i mean very true raja so uh, jack do you think uh, england is prepared for this test series how prepared are they or whether the demons of losing to india in india are still haunting them so what do you think um i think you know sometimes when you get absolutely smashed in sport the the best thing to happen is to play that team again and and to try and get the monkey off your back so i i think to some extent england the the change in conditions the the little rest they'll have had in between the the returns to their counties few of them have made runs at county level i think they'll be in a better place now they'll probably be looking forward to the challenge i i think the from a mental perspective and, and you know and cricket to use the cliche is there's a there's a significant mental part to the game and and i think for a few of the players that's compounded because they're effectively playing for their more well, short term place in the team and long or definitely long term place in the team um it's no secret that in england the, the ashes is is king in terms of of test cricket and they like you know zack rawley dom sibley rory burns they'll really really want to be on that plane to australia and they they know that they're probably two bad test matches away from not being on that plane to australia um and maybe rory burns has got a little bit of credit in the bank cuz he played quite well against new zealand but but certainly zach crawley i think if he starts the series if i mean he might not even be picked to be honest but i i think if he has a, a bad first test um then he he he's probably gone uh, i think there's there's a case that dom sibley could go I and mean, we saw hasib hamid back in form scored runs against this india bowling attack days ago he's back in the squad they wouldn't be picking him if they didn't think he was you know a potential replacement for the third test or the fourth test here i think um so th- that would be my concern if i were england is how do we get these players to to go out do what they they they're good at which is you know batting in english conditions and 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 and, and taking on pace bowling how do we get them to do that without the 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 mental pressure of 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 the fact that they they effectively playing for their england careers or at least their medium term england careers i mean i i think well, in rory burns case if he gets dropped he he's to, he's 31 32 i don't think he'll come back into the team so there's there's quite a lot of stake for these these players uh in in terms of you know that what they will you know when when they retire what they'll have achieved in the game um so i think that's probably bowling wise england england's bowling lineup is awesome in in england so i don't think they need to worry about that um you know they could pick any one of the or, or any four of the the seven or eight um, best pace bowlers in 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 this line in this uh in in it what in england um and they would still have the the best pace attack for for these conditions i think um it's it's the batting that you know yeah i think to be honest isn't very good <laughs> yeah definitely i think even in the new zealand series the batting is the one that has let down england and with inclusion of josh butler and ben stokes do you think the batting issues will be sorted out what do you think about inclusion of both of them um i think that they do improve the, so i mean like james brace scored four runs in four innings i think against against new zealand or something like that. maybe got 10 in in one of them um so you can't get much worse than that josh butler is definitely definitely an improvement there uh, and then ben stokes in in 
pace bowling conditions, shall we say, um, away from spin, is uh, is an elite test batter. He's not. I don't think his game is well rounded enough for us to say he's like one of the best batters in the world because I, don't, I just don't think he can do it in in Asian conditions, basically. But uh, in England, in South Africa, in the West Indies, in Australia, I think you, you know he is. He's up. He's in that conversation uh, in 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 terms of you know excellent, excellent test batters, and and that's an improvement. Um, so, you know, I, I would expect them to be better than against New Zealand. But, but again, the frailty at the top of the order just leaves these players exposed on, on too regular a basis. It's, it's, you, you, you don't want to give the opposition effectively the freedom to decide what they want to do to get out your number four 15 overs into a, into a test match. Um, you know, like, uh, or, I mean, does, does that make sense? I, I mean, I guess it does. Everyone here sort of understands what the top order is supposed to do. And I just, the, 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 the English top order just doesn't do what it's supposed to do regularly enough at the moment. I think both the teams have similar issues at the top, right? Because their bowling seems to be really sorted out or they have enough reserves in terms of bowling and middle order is, of course, with the inclusion of new players in England squad, they, both the teams also look sorted out. I think how both, I mean, that could be the difference at the end of the day. We never know like how openers of both the teams are going to play. That could be the difference. And talking of uh, talking of Hasib Hamid, so he made his debut in India in 2016. So he played three test matches and then never played for England again. So, I mean, his performance in county is bad over the last three seasons or what was happening with him? Yeah, it was. It wasn't bad. It was. It was so bad that the county that he was playing for, Lancashire, released him. They said he wasn't good enough for 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 them, them anymore. So he's moved county to Northamptonshire now. Yeah. Um, I think last season was his first season at Northampton or North, at Northampton, and he scored a few runs in the in first class cricket. This year he started really well. I think he has two or three centuries um, oh, already yeah. this season. So he's he's back basically. Um, I think. With Hasib Hamid, he's, a, he's, an, he's an interesting one in that I don't think at least the Lancashire setup uh, and and him really agreed on the best way forward for his game. So uh, my understanding is that he has a specialist batting coach and his specialist batting coach is his dad. And his dad is basically the only person he'll listen to for advice. Um, now, at the elite level of the game, I don't know whether that's the most healthy environment. I, I, maybe, maybe it is, maybe, but, you know, Rafa Nadal's play, you know, is one of the greatest tennis players of all time. He's coached by his uncle. Uh, he never, he never switched up his coach, or he did when his uncle retired. So, so I'm not saying it, it definitely isn't the right thing, but it certainly caused problems um, at Lancashire when he wasn't scoring any runs because the, 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 their, their coaches were saying you need to to change, and he was saying no, I'm going to listen to my dad. Uh, and just didn't score any runs for for two years. So so that's there's there's some stuff going on there. It's, I think it's really encouraging to see him back. He was definitely when when England went to India <clears throat> the time before last, and he batted really well. I think he averaged fifty, didn't he, over the three tests? Yeah, I um, think he scored a fifty, and total in three test matches he scored some two hundred odd runs. So and yeah, forty plus average and pretty good series, in fact. Yeah, yeah. So he 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 looked good, and I, I think of. The young, actually, he's still only 24. Of the young English players, he's probably the the top order batter with the highest ceiling, as it were. If if he can sort himself out, then he could be somebody who averages 40 at the top of the order for England, which would be massive. I mean, at the moment, you know, if you average 33, 34, you're doing quite well. If you're averaging sort of 35 plus in English conditions, opening the batting. You're excellent, and if you can get up to forty, then you are you legitimately have a claim to being one of the best openers in the world if you can do that in England. And I, and I think he probably has the the tools to do that. Um, again, it, it comes down. This is the same for a lot of the English players. It comes down to to, to mental um, preparation and, and and that sort of thing. It's 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 not a talent problem. It's it's um, it's it's all about you know how prepared or not some of these players are for, for, for test cricket. So now Ali Robinson is back into the selection squad. So do you think he'll start, England will start with him in the first test? What do you think? I, oh, that's, that's a really good question. I don't, um, unless, unless, uh, and they could do this, unless they don't play Jack Leach. Um, so I, I think England should have a spinner in, in the side. Um, Leach matches up really well with the India side. It, 
because there's so many right-handers in the in the in the India side, uh, and he, he he's an okay control bowler in English conditions as well. So I would have Leach. However, the fact that they you know you know the fact that they haven't done that for the first two tests of this year suggests that they might go with four seamers if they go with four seamers then i think there's a there's a good chance that robinson curran broad and anderson are the are the four that they have for the for the first match um there's the mark wood question do they want somebody bowls extremely quickly uh if they do then i think robinson's the first one to get dropped there because curran is the left armor and maybe the better batter although that's questionable uh is certainly the most senior player uh is, is probably the one that will retain their place uh, if they play Leach, Robinson again is is the one that gets dropped. Um, what I do think with Robinson, though, I, I expect him to feature over the five matches. I, I I don't think. Well, it's 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 an open secret that they're not going to play Anderson abroad for for all five matches. Um, you'll probably get I think three tests abroad, maybe four of Anderson um, over over the five, and Robinson fills in really nicely um, to replace one of those. Uh, there's also, the question of whether Wokes recovers from whatever injury he's got at the moment. Um, he's he's been quite unlucky over the last two years. If Wokes does recover, then Wokes is above Robinson for that for that um, pick. So, so maybe we won't see him. However, you know, I don't know if you've been, I don't know if you've followed much of Robinson's career. He has some astounding first class stats, and he looked really really strong against New Zealand. So uh, he, he's quite an exciting, if controversial, prospect from an English an English perspective, I think. So uh, do you think England will miss Jofra Archer for the entire series or there is a possibility that he could join it from the third test? Uh, he will not play in this series. I, I, that, I think that's, I don't think they've officially said that, but all of the, the journalists and the people who are close to the England camp have, have basically been saying this over and over again. And that's sort of how England operate. They, they have journalists that they like and they kind of leak news out that way. They don't really do official announcements. They, they'll do like a squad announcement and he won't be in it. And people will be like, why isn't he in it? And the journalists who are close to the England camp will do a story the next day and they'll explain why he isn't in it. And everything we've seen so far is that that elbow injury was quite severe. I think the surgery was reasonably comprehensive in terms of you know what they needed to do to... to, to uh, effectively extend his career. They were genuinely talking about how they, how that could be a career-ending injury um, or a career-ending issue for for him. And so England cri- surgery. So England so, cricket board in short is like smartphone companies these days. Huh? So they leak <laughs> to the journalists. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so so I, I I really don't think we'll see him in the series. I don't think England will miss him. Um, I think he he won't be fit enough to contribute, or he won't be fit enough to contribute. Um, I hope that he is something like 2019 Joffrey Archer by the time the Ashes rolls around in November. Uh, if he is, then we'll see a really exciting uh, middle act, I think, to Joffrey Archer's Test career uh, after after a good start with with some question marks. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, with the talent of Joe Archer, definitely they should utilize him better. And yeah, like every England fan will love him seeing, seeing you know, bowling him in full steam against Australia and Ashes. So what what, what should be playing eleven for England to start with? Uh, oh, that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, that's a tough one from the batting point of view. So I think um, Dom, Dom Sibley and Rory Burns scored enough runs against New Zealand to, to keep the wolf from the door. Um, I, I think they'll get at least the first two tests. Um, there are huge, huge question marks around Zach Crawley at number three. Um, I think England are quite, England's cricketing culture is quite conservative from a selection point of view and, or, or well, just in general, to be honest. Um, but particularly around selection at the moment. So I, I would be surprised if Zach Crawley was dropped for the first test. But I think he probably should be, um, and maybe that maybe you just throw Hasib Hamid in. I mean, he can't be any worse than Crawley was against New Zealand, uh, to, to be honest, or or Crawley was against India, or Crawley was against Sri Lanka. Uh, I mean, I mean, since his two hundred and seventy, Zach Crawley has virtually done nothing to, to justify being um, a test uh, a test batter. So uh, I think he will play, but I also think he shouldn't play. I mean, Zach Crawley. It, it, 
if you, if you want an example of poor selection um, and, and and poor uh, use of data and 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 the poor selection processes, Zach Crawley is it a guy who wasn't very good at first class cricket, who got promoted to the England team for no real reason, has scored has one innings has one innings in you know two and a half years in the team that that's elite basically and continues to be picked because presumably they think he'll be good in the future um, they've got no real evidence for why he'll be good in the future um, he's done nothing apart from that 270 which i think we can probably agree at this point might have been a bit of a freak he's done nothing to, to justify you know continued selection but they they continue to pick him so um that's frustrating. After that, we've got Joe Root, um, who is fantastic um, uh, and, and probably, you know, slightly underappreciated worldwide. I, I, I think he probably still is in, in the Fab Four. He's just unlucky that he has to play in England behind the three batters that I've just listed or whoever else comes in because he's, he's, he's you know, half the innings he plays, he's just opening the batting, um, which, which he isn't. He isn't <laughs> Matter. So he, he's got that to deal with, uh, and yet he still maintains like great run production year on year on year. So uh, you, you've got a route there. Uh, ben Stokes, awesome at number five. Um, and this is where I think it gets interesting because you there is a strong argument for someone like Ollie Pope or Dan Lawrence. I mean, to be honest, one of them could play instead of Crawley at number three. I, again, I don't think England will do it. I don't think they're, they're, that's just, you know not the kind of decision they make. Um, there's a strong argument for one of those two there. There's also a strong argument to do what England did against Pakistan and the West Indies last year, which is have Butler at six and then play, you know, all the all-rounders and all the bowlers. Um, so, so, you know, have Curran at seven and then Robinson at eight and then... Uh, then you could, then you can have Leach, Anderson, and Broad. So there, there is an argument for that. I think they'll play one extra batter. Uh, I think probably Dan Lawrence is the one who has the best recent track record. I think they might rest Ollie Pope. Um, I don't know that for sure. Um, they, they really, really love Ollie Pope, and he actually has the record at first class level that suggests that he could be a top top international player so I, I, I and I think they really he, he's he's played two or three innings where you you see him and you're like yeah this guy when he sorts out whatever it is that's holding him back will will dominate test cricket he'll have years where he scores like 1500 runs um but at the moment I don't think he's quite there so I I, I would think that maybe they do Dan Lawrence Joss Butler uh then I would go oof then it gets a little bit interesting. I think they'll probably pick Sam Curran. Uh, I think they'll probably go Wood. I think they'll probably go Anderson. They'll probably go Broad. Like I say with the pace bowlers, I don't think it really matters who they pick. They're all very good. They're all really, really good in English conditions. Um, and, and I think they've all got the talent to, to cause India a lot of problems. And even, I mean, if, if all of those bowlers, you know, they all got COVID together and England had to pick another eight bowlers, I think the next four into the, into the breach, as it were, would also cause India some problems. But I think England's depth in, in that area of the game is, is absolutely, you know, astounding. Um, yeah. Now I've said that, I mean, maybe, I mean, I, I was talking about Dan Lawrence and Crawley and Pope. Maybe, maybe they do Dan Lawrence at number three um, and they, and they drop Crawley. That's something they could, they could do that, but I, 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 Crawley's this project for them. And they really want it to work. And I think they'll be quite embarrassed if it doesn't. So and they're quite stubborn. So I, I think, I think, I think, yeah, I think that's what they'll do. Um, none of it inspires a great amount of confidence, though, to be honest. Apart from Root, Stokes, and, and Butler, and he, and even then, Butler's a you know his career test average is thirty four or something like that, and and we're talking about him like he's England's second or third best batter. Rather, <laughs> um, uh, let's talk about elephant in the room now. So, what will be the score line at the end of the series? Okay. Uh... So you're starting with me. <laughs> All right. Uh, so one thing I can tell you maybe is that uh, for sure uh, there won't. I think all five matches will give you results, weather permitting. Uh, I don't think uh, teams will battle it out for uh, hard fought draws because both teams are quite aggressive and they'll go for the result. Uh, having said that, I think the result might not be a runaway victory for either team. Uh, maybe it would be around three two. Uh, 
looking at the conditions probably maybe uh, england i i think but i could just be wrong i i, I hope i'm wrong so but so uh, your prediction is 3 2 for england yeah yeah okay so jack uh i think india will win this um i i think 3-1 possibly 3-2 if the weather's good I mean, we're in the middle of like the worst summer in english history so it could be nil nil um but uh i i i think india have just got um a little bit more in terms of batting um i i think i like the indian pace attack which is important and and i i, I like the indian spinners and i just i just don't think that England can deal with all those different challenges that the India bowling lineup can can present. I, I, I think, you know, when the conditions are good, Ishant Sharma will take wickets. Uh, when it's a little bit flat, you've got Bumrah. When if there's any spin, Ashwin and Chadeja will will rip through England. They they just don't know how to play elite level spin. Um, so I, I think that combination's pretty deadly. Um, I also I also think that Rohit Sharma is a so we talked about the 2018 series right at the beginning of the show where, where Virat Kohli basically was the, was the Indian batting lineup. Um, and I, I thought, I mean, like at the time, I thought that was one of the best performances by an away batter in England for that, that I can remember, particularly over five matches, just every match he produced. Uh, then Steve Smith came along the year after and scored about a thousand runs and it, was, it changed, the, changed the dynamic slightly. But um, I, I, think, I think Rohit Sharma bedded down at the top of the Indian order is potentially a bit of a difference maker. Now, I don't expect him to make loads of runs. I don't think he's going to average 80 over the series or something like that. But I, I do think there's the possibility for, you know, a quick 100 uh, or a quick 80 a couple of times in the, in, in the series. And that is something that the England team just cannot do. The only, the, the, if, you know, if Dom Sibley scores 100, it'll take him a day and a half to do that. Uh, and that that doesn't take the game away from, from, from teams in the way that I think Rohit Sharma can uh, uh, and I think probably at one point will um, and, uh, and I think you know in England cricket is it's it's cricket sped up the ball moves around way more than everywhere else like the the pitches are, are quite juicy um, the conditions are, are, are often favorable for the bowler um, and those kind of explosive innings can can really change the dynamic as as I guess we saw in 2018 with Sam Curran a couple of times um, came out India were on top an hour later, it's you know England's game, uh, and I just think India this this series have a few more of those players that are settled in and coming to England for not the first time, um, and and then they've got the bowling attack that 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 really underpins that. So I I, I fancy India to win probably three one. Yeah. So Manoj. Yes. Uh, so I think uh, England have edge because uh, England obviously it's home conditions for them they have better bowlers if, if India has to really win the series they have to pull the socks up uh, they have to play the moving ball they have to play it under the eye play the ball late all that what Kane Williamson has done in the WTC final you know uh, so I really think in England has the edge but what Indian term, uh, Indian what Indian team has done Australia so I would give them 50 50 maybe yeah, three to India, but England have the edge. But I'm rooting for India. Okay, so I I, I also think if uh, in, India has a good chance to win this series, and they have a lot to prove, especially Ravi Shastri and Virat Kohli for all for all the hype that they have given for this team. Of course, they have delivered in Australia, but I think it's there is a good chance for them to you know beat this team, and I I am rooting for India, maybe three two or three one. Whatever in, I mean, India will take this series. Uh, that brings us to end of this episode. Uh, finally, uh, out of out of four people here, three are thinking India will win, and you know, <laughs> Raja thinks. That, I, I hope uh, I'm wrong. Again. Yeah, yeah, we all hope. We all hope you are wrong. But uh, yeah, let's hope for an exciting series. It's 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 going to be a long series, and uh, let's hope we are going to see some good cricket. So, Jack, why don't you tell a uh, few of our listeners who don't know you where they can find you? I think most of them must be knowing you are pretty famous in India. So, why don't you think for the few of them who don't know you where they can find your podcast and you? 
I think pretty famous in India is a bit generous, to be honest. Um, but you can find the podcast uh, at The Cricket Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Um, you know, drop us some social media messages through the, through the tour. We'll cover pretty much everything there. We're, we've got a YouTube channel. I think if you just search The Cricket Podcast there, uh, it's a blue logo with some batting pads uh, and The Cricket Podcast uh, written on it. So we'll be doing... Uh, you know, quite a lot of post-day shows and, uh, and quite a lot of coverage over the next um, month and a half. But yeah, that's that, the best place to find us is probably Twitter, at the Cricket Pod. So that brings us to the end here. Uh, thank you again, Jack, for joining and sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers, no problem. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye.